Hi all, I have another model NIMZO Indian game to show you today. This is two very, very strong Super Grandmasters, Radislav Wojcik against Levon Aronian, played in the 2015 European Team Championship. Let's have a look. So d4 from Radislav. We have knight f6, c4, e6, knight c3, bishop b4. So the NIMZO Indian defense. Queen c2, the classical variation, a favorite move of Gary Kasparov. Black just castles here. So this is uh, a very, very interesting idea. And it's backed up uh, analytically nowadays. It's possible to look at e4 and not reject this possibility. Perhaps before this seemed too inviting. White usually plays a3, like in this game. But as a glimpse of e4, black can play d5 and now knight e4. And for example, knight f3 strike in the center with c5. And here c takes, and now knight d7 is an accurate move. And this should give black equality. So for example, bishop f4, knight uh, dc5, or bishop takes e4. This takes the sting out of uh, the battery, of course. And after queen a5, e5 is vulnerable, c5, c3 is hit. So this should be absolutely fine for black. So there are very complex variations invited by allowing this e4. But here we see the most popular move, a3, which is the other main idea really, is usually just to collect the bishop pair like this safely without damaging the pawn structure. So bishop takes c3, queen takes. Now d5, that locks down the e4 square a bit more. Knight f3. And now d takes c4, so wanting to gain potentially tempos on the queen. After queen takes c4, b6, so there's a possibility of bishop a6 now. Bishop g5, we have bishop a6, queen a4, h6, bishop h4, and now c5. D dc, bc, rook c1. Now queen d7 was played, so this is an interesting move by Levon Aronian. Queen b6 has been seen before, but queen d7, very, very interesting. Not minding to go into an endgame here with white having the bishop pair. So knight takes, we have bishop takes f6, knight takes f6, e3. You might wonder about this c pawn here. It will give black too much activity, but concretely, let's have a look. Rook takes, rook fc8. This position is precarious. Uh, for example, Stockfish plays around with the white king here on analysis. And if we get this position, the rook's kind of infiltrating uh, to c3 if if white's provoked on the queen side and look at look at white's pieces they're kind of they're undeveloped black's getting a big advantage there according to the engines so yeah if b4 here then knight e4 is very nice for black so disasters could happen as well so e3 not taking that c5 pawn bishop b7 knight e5 here uh, if bishop e2, black can play bishop d5, a nice central move. And for example, taking here again is a bad idea if black's going to get a rook to the seventh. That's at least equality. So knight e5, rook fd8. f3, blunting this bishop, seems a logical move. Knight d7, knight takes, rook takes, bishop b5. Again, if we look at rook takes c5 here, Black gets sufficient counterplay, it seems, doubling rooks and getting to that 7th rank, collecting b2. That's fine for black. Absolutely fine. So bishop b5, rook c7. So, okay, black has the c5 vulnerability, but white has a pawn also on this semi-open file. So there's some reasonably good prospects for black as well. Rook f1 was played. Perhaps more accurate for white to maintain a small edge is king f2. So, for example, rook b8. Uh, there may be a key tactical move here, c4, trying to make use of b2, trying to swap c4 for b2. So, for example, rook takes c4, uh, takes, takes, <laughs> bishop d5, hitting the bishop, and then there's uh, an intermediate move, rook takes b2 check if bishop takes d5. And if here, well, this is just equal, equal absolute equality. So this is, um, c4 move is very interesting here. Rook c3 as a more critical test. Uh, perhaps white can get a small edge with absolute best play. Okay, but uh, 
let's see rook f1 was played rook b8 bishop c4 bishop c6 rook f2 and black doubles on that pawn rook c c2 bishop a4 so black's opening play has resulted in equality which is great at this level very very high level at least the quality the rooks are coordinated we have g5 so restraining white's pawn structure a little bit king f2 rook b6 e5 bishop b3 so trying to weaken white on the light squares a little bit rook c2 rook 8 to b5 rook e d2 king f8 king g3 king g7 h4 king g6 hg hg king g4 now uh, we have rook e3 so some uncomfortable pressure white has to bear rook e2 rook d3 rook c4 check white took c takes b4 f5 check now at this critical moment in fact white should have played the en passant move e takes f6 here white played instead king g3 so this is a critical moment of the game where king g3 was played if e takes king takes it seems as though this position even though intuitively you might think well isn't this nice like these pawns uh black doesn't seem to uh, have enough to win here technically this is a nice blockade and even if black wins that pawn this should be an equal position with this very nice pretty blockade here so this opportunity was bypassed here of e takes f6 instead uh, white played king g3 and now in fact black's in the driving seat f4 check and now a forcing move d3 rook d2 rook takes e5 and white's king is not in the greatest spot as proven by this next move can you guess black to play if i give you five seconds what would you play here with black okay rook e1 there are numerous big threats not just rook g1 but also rook h1 for rook h4 believe it or not that king is precariously placed rook d8 was played so just to put a few things on the board b5 rook h1 g3 might be necessary to stop rook h4 but this is just nasty that's black's winning that and you know a4 rook h4 just to put that mate on the board so difficult rook d8 was played rook g1 rook g a check king f6 and the game actually ended here believe it or not what does white do here uh, if white plays rook f8 then then king g7 or king e7 are both very very strong for example like this taking here the point is now rook g1 and there's a possibility now by cutting uh, the rook from c1 there's g4 and f3 with this pawn guided down with the docking square of the rook so for example a4 g4 this is a very dangerous pass pawn f3 here and even if black gets this position yeah the two connected pass pawns work very well together there so that's absolutely hopeless uh, so both king g7 and also king e7 is strong here as well after taking and king f6 same sort of principle rook g1 first and then g4 same sort of idea basically okay so we'll go back to where the game ended so yeah it's a very very solid opening you might want to incorporate in your repertoire for the nimzo engine and if you want to check out some of these ideas and many more great ideas for a solid super solid repertoire which the top players like level neuronian and karyakin play then there's this free nimzo engine short and sweet course at kings crusher tv slash nimzo so if you check that out it's all free to check out train on the variations uh, so that's absolutely brilliant book by i am uh, not book online interactive course actually by i am chess explained and fm daniel barish who has recently beaten two grandmasters as well showing the strength of this repertoire okay thanks very much